It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. And good to be back home. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll be able to dismiss about 5 o'clock. I'm just teasing. Praise the Lord. But it's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Feel His peace and His glory. Uh, for those of you, and nobody knows this except for me, but while I was here yesterday, I got a text and Sister Sheila brought a couple of friends of hers by yesterday afternoon. I baptized them in Jesus' name. Amen. And one of them, uh, we'll have to remember them in prayer. I'm working on trying to get them to come to church, and they said they would, but you know how those new things work themselves out. But uh, Danny Sanders and Danny Sanders Jr. And Danny Sanders Jr. is in stage four lung cancer. And I told him, I said, you know, God can heal you after I baptized him. And he says, I know. So I'm believing in healing of stage four lung cancer. We need a miracle. And we're serving a miracle God. Amen. So God is doing great things. Praise the Lord. And I'm expecting more of the Lord to work. So you keep... It's easy to pray for two guys with the same name. <laughs> so when you're doing your drive-by prayers, remember uh, Danny Sanders and Danny Sanders Jr. in prayer. And I pray that we can get them to come to church. I, I told both of them, you really need discipled. You need to be in the presence of the Lord. Uh, or else this turns out just getting wet. So let's keep them in prayer. Hallelujah. They need the Spirit of God living inside of them. Praise the Lord. And they was truly heartfelt and desirous of a move of God. So that was exciting. Praise the Lord. Uh, today uh, we're going to go in the Lord in prayer. And uh, remember Sister Romine, she's enjoying another vacation. I go pick her up today at the airport, but she went with uh, her mom and her other sister to visit another sister in Kansas, so uh, she's enjoying some more time away. <clears throat> so keep her in your prayers. Keep uh, our traveling mother and daughter and uh, sister Burton as they travel to the Rocky Mountains, and uh, they'll be away from us, but God bless them. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful time, this opportunity to stand in your presence. Thank you for the great things that you have done, Lord. And I pray that you would move upon your word, anoint it, talk to our hearts and our minds. I pray for the souls that are here today, Lord, that you would move, Lord, in your will and your way, Lord, into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You uh, may be seated. We're going to uh, teach today, formed for a purpose. We are formed for His purpose. How many are thankful that God has a design and uh, purpose for you today? Praise the Lord. He has faithfully formed us into His image. Praise the Lord. Uh, he gives us an honorable uh, purpose to do with our lives. And our sole desire should be, my sole desire is, I don't know about you, is to be faithful unto Him. Sometimes we allow our human uh, limitations and failures to blind our way, but we still have a designed purpose to worship and magnify the Lord today. So I'm going to bring to you Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. And uh, we're just going to talk today about being formed for the purpose of the Lord. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify you. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Oh God, behold, I can't speak, and for I am a child. Now Jeremiah's 
uh, age has nothing to do with it. He is just trying to make an excuse. God, really? I'm, I'm running from this divine will on purpose. Isn't there somebody else you can find? But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou will speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Praise the Lord. We are formed for a purpose. How many of you thankful that there is a reason God saved our souls? Amen. Gave us an opportunity to live for Him. You know, we cannot fully understand the complexity of DNA. And it's just been of recent years that they've been able to use DNA and it has changed The outlook of a lot of uh, cases that have come across the the detective's desk. And DNA has a defining point of who you are. It's a marker. It's a tracer that gives you uh, an identifying effect that the Lord has given to us. In fact, science keeps finding these qualities that point to a creator. The more they study DNA, the more they find out that this is more than just an evolutionary theory, that this has to have a design. Somewhere along the line, there's a superior design because of the way that the DNA has been made. But we all know that their first study into it was to really try to search to prove the evolutionary theory. Isn't it amazing the more that man tries to prove that there is no God, the more God begins to show man that I am real. Praise the Lord. In an article uh, of a booklet called Acts and Facts in 2004, it is titled Mending Mistakes, The Amazing Ability of Repair. And this article was written by a scientist and uh, He said, when DNA has been damaged by time or been damaged by the environment, carcinogens or toxic compounds that it gets involved with, there there are molecules and systems of repair in the uh, genetic, this genetic damage. It heals itself. Sherwin, the writer of that article, also states that these repair systems are a God shaped or God designed uh, equity inside of the DNA. It was made there. It was formed to do exactly that. These changes though is what evolutionists would try to call mutations or would say to lead to new structures or new functions. No, but it's a healing of the DNA that God had placed in the human body. Before God molded man, before he even moved upon the earth and formed the dust, his plan for DNA was already set in motion. God had already planned. He had all the details worked out. And when he spoke the complexity of science into existence, I love that phrase. I got it out of a notebook. I I didn't come up with it with my own thought, but I thought, man, that sounds good. I want to just say it. (laughs) When he spoke the complexity of science into existence, doesn't that sound so scientific? And it just simply, God speaks his word and boom, there it is. Praise the Lord. We were made from the thread of truth and formed into his prize creation. Hallelujah. Today we discover things that have been in place for all eons of time. We're just now touching the surface of things that God had known for ten thousands of years and He spoke them into existence so long ago and now He's just now allowing us to reveal it to ourselves and to know 
and try to understand his great. You know, the vastness of the universe is just astounding and amazing to me. As believers, it is an amazing thing to hear the scientific discoveries that point to our Lord. Praise the Lord. It builds my faith. Does it build yours? That through science, God can show uh, His desire for us to know who He is. All throughout time, we can find that God, in each step of His manifestation, made a way that we would know who He was. Praise the Lord. And what He has done for us. Amen. He created everything to draw our focus back to Him. And the more that we discover through medicine, and more we discover through space and biology and other types of research, uh, research, the more it begins to point to the God that created us. How many are thankful that you know the God of your creation? Hallelujah. And I know Him by name, and His name is Jesus. And He has saved me from my sins. So I have a question for you. What do you see when you think of these types of jobs or uh, professions? A teacher, a police officer, or a nurse? Just take a moment and think. Maybe... Maybe for a teacher, was it your favorite teacher? Anybody have a favorite teacher that you can remember? Sometimes maybe you might have to really remember way back. (laughs) There's no favorite teacher, sister. Oh, there is a favorite teacher. And she's got a big smile, so it must have been a good one. Maybe it's a teacher that you remember or a kind nurse that you encounter during one of your hospital visits or a hospital visit uh, with here of this past year, I've encountered several nurses. <laughs> and they all want blood for some reason. Or maybe it's a police officer that gave you a warning ticket instead of a ticket. I know I, I remember the ones that gave me a ticket. <laughs> and they slowed me down a little bit. Praise the Lord. However the outcome was that you uh, remember those types of individuals, uh, their con- uh, contribution to society is, is uh, astounding. They, they make a difference in people's lives. And they hold up uh, some of the values that society would hold to. But there's also some other things or, or that kind of bring them together. Three These are three vocations that have the same uh, things that are, they're kind of synonymous together. One would be long hours. Sister Rachel, what do you think of them 12 hour days? They're long. I know 26 hours straight for a utility worker is terrible. (laughs) I've done that. High stress. Do you, you have any stressful situations? Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be a teacher or a police officer today in today's society. Talk about high stress and low pay. Sometimes in my job classification, I get into some areas that I think it ain't worth it. <laughs> Sometimes when your life flashes before your eyes, It's not really worth the pay. But those jobs or maybe others that are like them are careers known to have a sense of a calling. They're there for a purpose. They're designed for that. It was placed in their heart to want to do those. So they get past the salary figures. They're not there for their money. They're not there uh, because of, of... Something that that job can, it offers them satisf- satisfying uh, opportunity. <laughs> How's this? Is this better, Sister Erlene? <laughs> I'm alive again. We will finish this. <clears throat> But many have forgotten the importance 
of a calling. Many have forgotten that we live a life for a calling. And although maybe it's not a career choice that you had chosen uh, at the t- moment in time, but God still has a purpose and a calling on your life. Through the life of uh, and the calling of Jeremiah, we can see that there is great importance to a calling and there's a great importance for a calling upon our lives. All of us have been called. Yes, I may have been called into the ministry and a pastor of your pastor, but all of us have received a spiritual calling. A calling that says, I want the Lord on my side. A calling that says, I've got a God that loves me. A calling that gives us the opportunity to encounter a God that created us and gives us value in our purpose because now we know a divine calling. God begins to speak and begins to uh, talk to our lives. How many of you are thankful that you can hear the voice of God? Today in our world, we live amongst people that when you talk to them about the Lord and you say God speaks to you, they're astounded. They can't uh, uh, comprehend. What do you mean God's talking to you? Why? It's so shocking to them that God would, a supernatural being would want to talk with them. They, uh, there are those that we encounter on a daily basis that have not been able to hear the voice of God. They, they haven't been able to recognize that God is ministering to them. They haven't seen, they, they don't know exactly until you point it out to them that the voice of God is ministering to their lives and asking them to be a part of what He has designed for them, a purpose for for them. And until they come in contact and understand the voice of God, then they won't know that desire that's on the inside of their heart. You know, we here today, we hear and desire to hear the voice of the Lord. We're serving the Lord that is not only our God, but it's our desire to hear and to do His will. Aren't you thankful that God still speaks? He speaks to the heart and He ministers to the mind and the soul. The hard part is that we as humans are sometimes uh, drawn away by other things. But did you know that we were designed, it's in our DNA, to hear the voice of God? To know who He is? To be in fellowship? To converse with Him? Praise the Lord. That's why it's so important to take time and pray. That's why it's so important to take time and 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 meditate upon His Word. Whether it's a, a whole book in the Bible a day or just one simple verse. It's just to meditate upon the words and encourage yourself in the Lord. In fact, humanity was designed to live in the fellowship of the Lord. Adam and Eve had daily fellowship and it wasn't until sin entered in and caused the separation. And still today, sin is separating man from God. But God has given us an opportunity and a calling and a purpose and says, I'll take away your sin that you can minister with me and walk with me. Hallelujah. There's been, by the time a soul hears of the true nature that they have within them, the abilities that has been placed inside of their DNA. The human rebellion has already disrupted the heart from knowing the value of knowing who God is for their lives. Man is born and shapen in iniquity, all because of sin's plight. But God still speaks. It was because of the fall of man that sin entered in and man began to refuse to hear the voice of the Lord. But it's through Scripture that we learn how to hear and to listen. That's why it's so important that we know Scripture and we meditate upon His Word. 
It teaches us to be submissive unto His will. It teaches us to worship Him and to magnify Him and praise Him. It teaches us that there is a, an obedience that we need to follow to follow after the laws of God. Praise the Lord. They are tools of hearing the voice of God. If you submit and you give your life to God and you begin to worship and magnify Him and you obey His Word, then you have worked the tools and you will hear the voice of the Lord as He ministers in and throughout your life. Moses would begin to command the people, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. I'm so glad that God still speaks and I just simply have to listen. God gave a call to Jeremiah and at the time he was a young man living in the time of the uh, revival of Josiah. He seen the beginnings of uh, of the Babylonian exile, but as a young person, he seen uh, the revival that led uh, was led by Josiah. He grew up worshiping and magnifying Yahweh, going into the temple and 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 knowing that God was a deliverer, knowing who He was to the very point that as a grown man, he seen the fall and the besiege of that very temple as it was looted and burned as the Babylonians began to conquer the enemy enemy came in like a flood and took everything. God had given him a purpose way before then. Could I tell you here today that our society is facing things of the end time hour that they will not understand, but they know there's something supernatural about its effects. You can see it on, on the news every day. There's a change, changing of mantle in our world today. Could I tell you that World War III is about, World War III is about to break out and then soon to follow is Armageddon. It's the beginning of the seven years of tribulation. And and before the seven years of tribulation, I believe that the Lord is coming for His church. Could I tell you here today, it's very important that we can hear the voice of God. Because if we can't hear the voice of God, then we will not hear the trumpet when it sounds. And that's my goal. That's my desire. To see my Savior, my God in the heavens as He comes back. Could I tell you time is winding down. And it's more important now that we are able to hear the voice of the Lord. The Babylonian exile is about to begin. We are now seeing as the church is being demoralized. God is being taken out and ripped out of the hearts of those. That now even our children don't even know the existence of a true and mighty God. Could I tell you, it's more important now that we get a true desire to hear the voice of a Savior that is drawing us closer to Him. My hope is in Him, not in the things of this life. Hallelujah. It's in this middle time of revival and, and in this time of backsliding that the prophet begins to get the call from the Lord. In fact, he becomes the last voice of God before the final judgment falls. Could it be here today that we will be the last voice that this world will hear when the judgment sound begins to ring? We are serving a God that gave His life for this world that none should perish, but all should come into eternal life. He's come to save all. And I'm so thankful that we can still hear the voice of our Lord. Hallelujah. Jeremiah began to pin the words as he began to give us an, an encounter of his encounter with the Lord. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. Jeremiah's purpose was not simply to bring the voice of God, but it was to uh, give him a platform that he could give the task of ministry of repentance. He began to tell them and cry 
Haggai, known as the weeping prophet, and began to cry aloud, Oh, Israel, Israel, the Lord would just wrap his arms around you if you would just allow him to love you. Uh, could I tell you that your God can go wherever it is that you're at and wrap his arms around you and love you, even in the midst of captivity of the things that seemed to have to hold you down. My God, your God can minister to you in a realm that nobody else can because he knows exactly where you're at and he knows exactly what you need to sustain you and to love you. In fact, Jeremiah would be called, you know, Isaiah would begin to plead unto the Lord to send me and Ezekiel would begin to give the vision of the wheel in the wheel and and begin to try to give uh, Israel a hope that you're not going to always be in captivity. But Jeremiah was a prophet of repentance. uh, And not only was his voice heard through all Judea uh, at that time and hour, but we could hear his voice now. He was a prophet of the Gentile uh, that said repentance will always work. Could I tell you uh, that when we find a place of repentance in our heart, that God would come to right where you're at and surround you with His love and wipe away your sins and form you into His purpose and to His will and to His design. You know what His design was? His design for the New Testament church is the new birth. Peter preached on that day, repent of your sins. Come to a place of repentance. It was like Jeremiah crying in the wilderness, the weeping prophet. Oh Israel, if you would just know that God is here to save you. It's the same words that we're hearing as the apostle would begin to preach that day. Find a place of repentance. If you're wanting the true move of salvation in your life, if you're wanting to know and hear the voice of God, repent of your sins. Be baptized baptized into his name we call it the new birth because when we desire to be born again God begins to put a DNA inside of us and begin to form us before we even have an identity of spirituality that once we come to repentance and we're baptized into his name and we receive his Holy Ghost and we're born again he said before you was formed I knew you and I shaped you and I put a call upon your life could I tell you that what while I was yet a sinner that Jesus died for me yet I was not saved he said I found his way to save you and to love you before you became a saint I formed you and I gave you purpose now you're born again and then we can hear the voice of the one that loves us that dies for us that gives to us. Stand with me here today. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this place today. The simpleness of His words gives us call to to do more for Him, to live deeper for Him. There's purpose for your life. Those of you that have been born of the water and of the Spirit, you was formed. God knew you before you even came to where He was at. And He drew you to William. And you was formed and you became a new creature in Christ Jesus. And yet He tells you, before you ever was born again, I formed you. I knew you. I put my ideology in you. I put my DNA in you. I knew you. And I loved you. And that's his love for the world today. He desires that they would hear his voice. The tug of the heart. Somewhere you're here for the reason that God has placed a tugging on your heart. And his word has ministered to your life. And you have been formed by the DNA of the supernatural creator of God himself. And he's ministered to you. And you have a purpose and a design and a way, reason why you're standing here. All we have to do is worship and magnify him. Be submissive unto him. And follow His Word. Hear His voice. 
pray with me here today. Lord, I praise you. I worship you. I thank you for this wonderful opportunity to stand in your house, Lord, to feel your anointing and your glory. I pray you would move upon our hearts and our minds here today, that you would minister to our souls. In Jesus' name, I pray. Move throughout our worship service, I pray. In your great name, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise forward. We're dismissed. Thank you.